Okay, in video three, we're going to start working on the chapter four part of the midterm review. And we start out classifying triangles by sides and then also by angles. Okay, if you're going to classify triangles by angles, you have these choices up here. Okay, so I look at this first triangle and I notice that it has an angle that's greater than 90. That alone allows me to say <clears throat> right away that it must be an obtuse triangle. So that answer is obtuse. Now, this was a quiz question I put on, and many of you got it incorrect. So many of you said that um, this triangle right here, this little one, was a, um, let's see, what did we say? We said that they were equiangular, and it's not. There's only two equal angles. Do the math. 75 plus 75 is 150. That makes this top one 30. So once you have an angle that's not the same as the other two, it's not a candidate to be equiangular any longer. So if you have a missing angle, go ahead and solve for it, and then with that full information, answer the question. So once we do that solving, we say that all the angles are less than 90, and therefore we can call this an acute triangle. Okay? So that's classifying by um, your angles. Okay, let's talk about classifying by sides and by angles. So if you're going to do it by sides, you have three options, and they are listed up here. You can barely see them on my tape, but you have it on your worksheet. Um, scalene, equilateral, and isosceles are the classifications. So if I'm looking at 1B, it says classify the triangles by sides and by angles. So by sides, I see I have three sides that are equal. So that makes it equilateral. So equilateral, I'm just going to put equal with an L. But remember, we also said that isosceles, by definition, means it has at least two sides equal. This one has at least two sides equal. It has three equal. So besides being equilateral, you can also say that it's isosceles. So we had talked about this in class, and I'm going to abbreviate that as well. Okay, look at the angles. Uh, note that if you have a triangle that is equilateral, it will always be equiangular also. So I have equiangular here. Equi... I'm going to put, just say equiang. That's equiangular, which is the word right here. All right, so this one's kind of a special case as well. If something is equiangular, then it means that all of these angles are the same. If they're all the same, they have to be 60. And if they're all 60, they're less than 90. And if they're all less than 90, then they're also all acute. So we can classify this uh, first triangle in a couple of ways. So that B triangle has two classifications that are possible for the sides, as well as two for the angles. This is unusual. We don't usually have this. Okay, so look at the next triangle with 130. The second you see the 130 angle, that's an obtuse angle. If we're classifying by angles, it is obtuse. Now, I don't like this problem for one reason. If you're going to classify it by sides, you have to go by looks, which never should happen in geometry. So we're making an exception here. I know that this side is going to be the longest because it has the biggest angle across from it. But then what they want you to assume, just by the way it's drawn, that um, this side over here is smaller than this side here. So that means that you, if you're going to label it, you have three different sides, three different side lengths. If you have three different side lengths, then classifying by sides, you would say it is scalene. All right? So scalene by sides, obtuse by angles. Okay, question two says find the measure of the exterior angle shown. So this is the exterior angle. So you have to know that part first. So the exterior angle equals the sum of these two remote angles. 
So they're remote interior angles. So that's going to give me an equation. So the exterior angle, which is 3x minus 22, equals the sum of the exterior, uh, of the interior angles. Okay, and those interior angles are special ones. They are called interior remote. Okay, so I'm going to say I, interior, and then remote, because they're far away from the exterior angle that we're talking about. All right, so you have to have that equation. So what did I just do? Yes, I said this is my exterior angle, and here are my remote interiors. All right, my goal is to get x by itself. Since I have a 3x on the left and a single x on the right, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. That gives me 2x. I'm going to add 22, add 22 here. So that's going to give me 102. So what am I going to end up getting? So let's see what I have. 102 here, divide both sides by 2. And I'm going to end up getting x is 51. But again, I am not done because they don't want the x just. <clears throat> That's just a part of the way to get to my answer. They want this angle. So to get the angle, I'm going to say 3x minus 22. I'm going to replace the x with the 51. So 3 times 51 minus 22 should get me an, an exterior angle of 131 degrees. Okay, so we have all of those problems done on this page. Let's go on to the next page. So on this page, when I save this copy, the, the um, type is a little bit weird, so we're going to correct it as we go. Okay, question A is asking you for angle P. Okay, so I have some things to work on here. I'm looking here and here. This is very valuable information. Based on that information, I'm going to decorate my triangle, and I would advise you to do the same. If triangle TJM is congruent to triangle PHS, then I know some things are true. I know that order matters, and so if I look at the order, I know that angle T equals angle P because they're both the first angles in their respective congruency statement triangles. Okay, angle J, so why don't we change colors? <clears throat> angle J is second. Angle H is second. So we're going to make those double hash marks. Okay, and then we'll change colors one more time. And what's left is angle M. So I know angle M has to equal angle S because they're both last in this list. So that list is very, very, very important. When they say you have congruencies and they list it like that, it is not random. So you are allowed to go ahead and put all the information you need on your picture. Okay, let's now deal with the line segments that make up this triangle. So looking at those statement, that statement again and changing my color one more time, <clears throat> what I see is TJ is the first line segment they're speaking of. So where is TJ? So TJ is right here. I'm going to put a golden hash mark right there. PH is the first segment that they speak about in this other triangle. So I'm going to put a hash mark right there. That's a single hash mark because those two lengths are the same. If these triangles are congruent, then I'm finding all the corresponding parts that are also congruent. So change in color. Let's go to the next pair. Okay, J, M are the next letters that come. So I'm going to put two hash marks right there. And that lines up with H. S. So HS is right here. So I'm going to put two hash marks right there. One more time. Um, let's look at MT is all that's left. I'm going to put three hash marks there. 
and that has to match up with SP, which is right over here. Okay, so I have all kinds of coloring going on. Let's see if we can use that to answer these questions. So angle P, what is angle P equal? Well, looking at hash marks, I see angle P has the same hash mark as angle T, which is 73 degrees. That makes that angle 73, 73 degrees also. Okay, so this is 73 degrees. Okay, segment JM, how long is that? JM is the, the two hash mark. So what do I know about that? I don't know the actual length, but do I know that it's equivalent to another piece on the other triangle? I certainly do. So JM is going to be equivalent to the one that has double hash marks, which is SH. So you can say either SH or HS, and then put your line segment. Okay, this next question says the measure of angle, and this is the angle symbol, angle M. So what's the measure of angle M? Well, angle M has three hash marks, angle S has three hash marks, and angle S is 48 degrees. They are corresponding parts, so they both measure 48 degrees. Okay, what about the measure of angle P? So angle P is empty right now. So, but I see that it has the same hash mark as angle T, and angle T is 73 degrees, and since they are corresponding parts, it is also 73 degrees. Okay, MT, when they have no mark on top, they're asking you for the length of MT. So I look at MT and I have no length. But I look at SP, which also has three hash marks, and I see a length of five centimeters. So that, because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, I may put five centimeters there as well. Okay, now look what they did. They changed the order of the triangle. They used to call it PHS, and now they're calling it HPS. So if they change the order, I can change the order for my other triangle. So let's see if we can line it up. Okay, so angle H is equivalent in the original triangle to angle J. So I'm going to put J first. Okay, angle P lines up with angle T which means that angle S must line up with angle M. And there you go. So triangle HPS is congruent to triangle JTM. Okay, so that was a good exercise. So we're going to now do the um, rules of congruence for our triangles. Next page. Okay, so we have talked about rules of congruence. So initially when we started doing this, you had to get all three sides and all three angles equal before you can say things are congruent. Now they tell us that that's not exactly the case. So we have three options. Okay, one is side angle side, and we'll talk about that in just a second. The second one is side side side. And then when you have right triangles, and only when you have right triangles, do you have the option of doing HL? So the best way to teach this at this point is to go over these questions. So look at question five, and what do I see? So I am seeing that I have right triangles. So that means it's a candidate for HL. So this could possibly HL, but I'm not certain. So if it's HL, I have to have the hypotenuses the same. So look, this hypotenuse have, has two hash marks, so does that one. So I have the hypotenuse is the same. So that takes, takes care of that piece. Now look, these triangles have the leg in common. So if it's in common, it has to be the same. So I have the L piece. They are right triangles. We've established that. So I can say, without a doubt, we can remove the question mark, and we can say that I, I can establish congruence of these triangles by HL. So in this little box, 
you can write HL. Okay, look at 6. So what do I see for 6? So I'm seeing I have a side, I have a side. Ooh, I have an angle that's in between the two sides, which is the requirement. And then I have a side in common. So if I have side, angle, side, congruent to side, angle, side for the other triangle, then I can say side, angle, side, congruencies. Now notice, very, very important, the angle that we're speaking about has to be between these two sides. It cannot be that angle, and it cannot be that angle. It has to be the one that's sandwiched between the two sides. And in both cases, here it is over here, I have the sandwiched angle and the two sides in common with the sandwich angle and the other two sides. So I definitely have side, angle, side there. Okay, moving down to number seven, I have something that looks very similar to me. So I have a side in common, here's the sandwich angle again, and then here I have a common side. So again, by side, angle, side, I can say that those two triangles that make up that one shape are congruent. That takes us to question eight. I have no angles marked in question eight, but I do have sides marked. So I see I have a three, and I have a three. I have a two, I have a two. Then I have a side in common. So I really have side, side, side is congruent to side, side, side of the other triangle. So by side, 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 I can establish that the triangles in eight are congruent. Okay, that brings us to nine. And nine, I can kind of see. Um, I think I can see all the information I need to see. So they're right triangles. So I have a potential of being HL, but no guarantees. So I see that I have a hypotenuse in common, hypotenuse, hypotenuse, and they have the right angles, so that's the requirement, but don't I have a leg that they share? If they share a leg, it has to be the same length. So I have HL and HL, and therefore I can indeed say by HL that those two shapes that make up, the two triangles that make up the bigger shape are indeed congruent by the HL. Okay, one last one and we are done. So question 10, look what we have. We have one hash mark, one, whoops, let me change. Okay, one hash mark, one, doubles, doubles, triples, triples. So all my sides of one triangle are exactly equal to the sides of the other triangle. That is a congruency of side, side, side. And that ends our video and it ends our midterm review. So you should go back, make sure that you can do this, these problems, because I'm not going to ask you exactly these. You have to understand the underlying theory. So make sure you have that. Uh, I would write out your answers. I would listen to whatever parts you need to listen to. Come ask me questions. Work with your classmates and prepare to be successful on the midterm.